thing, but you can see a bit of structure there. You can see a big group of fish in behind it there, and then you can see some more fish. Yeah, look at that, that is insane. What wouldn't eat this? There we go, look at that, two nice Fitzroy prawns. Hey guys, Bernie here with uh, Fish and Boat Magazine on the magnificent Fitzroy River today. As you can see, what a morning. And today we're going to walk you through um, a bit of a new technique. So you'll have the armchair experts at home probably saying, oh, I've been doing this for years or whatever. But yeah, this little technique basically come out of um, pure laziness really so you know I was taking the kids fishing and I just it was just doing my head in having to keep changing rigs over and and um, yeah we come up with this little idea and we're going to show you how to do it today everything from rods and reels and uh, and line jig heads and what you what you should be looking for on the sounder so we got the hummingbird fired up it's going on just waiting for the old man to um, make his way down he's parking the car at the moment so yeah let's get into it all right guys we're just going to run through the uh, rods and reels and and the setup that we use uh, to run this so I normally bring oh, probably you know two or three rods so I start with something very light so that's only sort of got you know 40 pound leader and a pretty small jig head and that's only sort of 15 pound braid so you can run this um, if you fish are out in the open sort of thing if you don't have to put a lot of pressure on them and you know you always always got that little uh, finesse rig uh, even when you're using live prawns so just downsizing leader downsizing jig heads just make everything smaller and I've seen that make a difference at times and you know I've still got Barra doing this using this method on that sort of stuff you know up to around a meter and King up to around a meter 40 so but you know, if it's if the fish are in tight structure or pylons, always go for always go for a little something a little bit heavier. So I'm probably the only knob that's actually going to bait fish with an edge rod too. But you don't have to use expensive rods like that. You know what I mean? Like your um, your uh, hundred dollars rod, uh, your reel is probably a little bit more important as long as it's got nice, you know, drag pressure all that sort of stuff. So I love me Stratic. So that's a 2500 CI4 Stratic, and that's. Um, Power Pro, 15 pound power, power Pro on there at the moment, and 40 pound FC 100 uh, Sunline leader. And then, like, if you're gonna go, you know, chase them if they're in pylons or in heavy timber and they're and they're big fish, you've got no choice. You can't muck around with them. So, so we got a 5,000 Stratic here. We got 30 pound. Hopefully the shadows aren't flogging me there at the moment. Yeah, I'll just move this back out. All right, yeah, so where were we? Yep, so that is, yeah, 10 to 20, seven foot. Yeah, that's the, the heavy gear. And there's 80 pound leader there and a nitro. That's a nitro jig head, that one. So yeah, that's, um, don't mess with these jig heads. Like they have really hard to bend those ones. So yeah, that's, um, and that's, a, that's about her. Yeah, 80 pound leader and a tight drag you know what i mean if you're throwing them in those um in those really not tight places where those big fish are holding that's the that's the gear i'm going to go for there so yeah i normally got one say 10 or 15 pound leader uh sorry 10 or 15 pound braid 40 pound leader and then the next rod and reel will have say 30 pound braid 60 pound leader and then the heavier one will have 80 pound leader and yeah like i said the nitro jig heads if you um yeah they they're really hard to bend and they can take take a good bashing so we'll uh we'll load a uh we'll load a uh jig head up for you now just to show you what we do and how we go about it all right we'll just run through how we go about putting them on the jig head there is a little bit of uh a little bit of a way that we do this that make it a bit better so first of all you got your live prawns only uh, if they're sort of only a bait size, and we put say two or three on a jig head, 
but instead of going underneath which convent you know most people normally do conventional I'd say you go through the side of the tail and that last that last bit of the prawn in there where the um, the body's a lot tougher a lot harder so you go in through there and he'll flick around quite happily like that and we'll chuck another one on and look at that that is insane what wouldn't eat this there we go look at that two nice Fitzroy prawns on the jig head ready to be munched all right so that's the that's the setup and what we need to do now is we need to go with our sounder and we need to find uh, the fish rich areas so if you can find a place put them in some water if you can find a place where um, there's a, a large congregation of fish or a reasonable gathering of fish in the one area and they're staying still it makes it really easy to stay on top of them and just keep just flick your little jig head out with the prawns on it and just waft it through and um, yeah we got 19 degree water temps today so it's it's bloody cold um, but we'll uh, we'll see how we go and we'll see if we can find a couple of screenshots for you to have a look at so just to explain the technique it's very 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 simple we've got our prawns that we rigged up before a rod and reel reasonably reasonably tight drag and it's all all it is once you find your spot all it is is a matter of just flicking it out very gently letting it hit the bottom and just wafting it through where those fish are sitting the, the more accurate that you can get that cast on those fish especially in winter time like it is now the uh, the more chance you have of success you know what I mean like you want these prawns to be just bouncing bouncing through their noses so all they got to do is just open it up and and um, just grab it so it's definitely not a method that I think think of pioneered or anything like that it's just you know when you're on the water you're always thinking always trying new new ideas and uh, like I said this this technique come from you know going and fishing lures and then swapping over to bait with the kids so so I don't really believe in, uh, in giving away giving away spots but what we're going to do with this technique is we're going to put them to the test so we're going to go and find some of the most pressured areas on the Fitzroy so I'm really sorry to say if you see a couple of your spots in this video they're definitely not circuit so these are the spots we go past and there's there's always boats there um, and they're always fishing so and there's there is good fish there to be caught so but um, yeah so we're gonna put them to the test uh, on some highly pressured spots and and see what we can come up with anyway I think it's only a little, ah, oh, little barra. Alright. Oh. Little tagger. Little tagger. That's how easy it is. Did you have your camp one? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. There's a jig head right in the corner of the jaw. He's only probably oh, maybe 40 odd centimetres. There we go. Ta ta! There we go. So that's. It's not a massive fish. Ooh, on the lens. It's not a massive fish, but that's just how effective it can be. So just looking over here. So in this area sort of from about there to about there we scanned up some uh, some good fish numbers so that's where I've just been just been concentrating the cast as you've probably seen and that's uh, that's where the fish came from so 
hopefully we can get a, uh, a few bigger ones for you. Yep. Ah. Blew him. Oh, not sure. Let's go back to the lighter gear. So the lighter little jig head. Uh, the bigger gear is not working, so just going for a little bit of finesse and some multiple prawns on the one on the one jig head. It's bloody cold, eh? Like the water temp's only 19 degrees, and as the day gets on, it's get, getting colder and colder. So, but um, already got a bit of success, and they're not the greatest tides today. So I'll probably come back um, at a different stage on some on some better tides. And um, after today, obviously, we've still got a few hours left, but. And see if we can get some uh, some some bigger fish and, uh, and some better footage. Anyway, keep soldiering on. So we've got only got little prawns here. So we're going to put three of this sort of size on my little jig head. We'll see how we go. Have a go at that. That is moist. <clears throat> That's going to get creep surely. Yeah, don't be afraid to load your, load your jig heads up. Three or four or five prawns, depending on the size of them. Let's see how we go. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> Monster. Oh, hopefully there's some bigger ones in there. Bit of fun. I'll have a quick look at the sounder screen and show you uh, what you should be looking for when you're just um, going to do this technique. So, right down here, I've just free froze the screen, but you can see a bit of structure there. You can see a big group of fish in behind it there, and then you can see some more fish there, and then all the way up that bank is just scattered with fish so we've got an incoming tide so the tide's going this way and those fish are sort of sitting in out of the run so in behind here which makes them a really easy target to flip you know sort of flick your prawns out and just just waft them through so we have a look at those uh, water temps 19 degrees there at the moment we're still getting bites no big fish just yet but We'll, uh, we'll persevere, persevere with it and um, yeah, see how we go. Oh, bugger. Better. <sighs> nice monkey. Better fish, better fish. I <laughs> <laughs> got him. Woo! Five me, don't let me hang in. Come on, mate. Oos! Ah, oh, the prawns. Ah, oh, the prawns. Yeah, 70 odd. Yeah, we're gonna be 70. There we go. So there's a little jig head underneath there, only using really light gear. But he's just short of 70. So 
So yeah, a couple of prawns cast in, and just slowly, <coughs> slowly working them through where um, where those fish are sitting. So they're just sitting in behind that structure, just out of the run. There's some some good numbers of fish there, like we've seen on the sounder before. And uh, yeah, got, finally got one on a cold mongrel day, 19 degree water temp. You know what I mean? It's um, if you persist with it, like it's a good little technique that will catch a fish, and as as you've seen, so. And uh, yeah, righto, keep going. All right, so I've just done oh, about half a day, so it's about midday now, and it's actually starting to warm up a little bit now, but we've had enough, so that's it for the day. But you know, I'll talk to a lot of the other guys that have been on the water, like it was a, um, a tef definitely a tough morning, so most of the other boats didn't really get much action um, or didn't boat a fish. We ended up with two bar and, and three threadies, like. You know, not, we have one nice barrel and the rest of them are sort of small, but you know what I mean? It goes to show that, you know, that te that technique does work, you know, when, when the when the fishing's tough. So, you know, get yourself a few live prawns and, uh, and a jig head and a good sounder. Good sounder is paramount. Set up a nice side imaging sounder and um, you'll be able to see those little schools of where they're sitting and just run those prawns through them. Like, at the moment we're on around the new moon so not not ideal so you know those fish were more likely to school up around the quarter moons especially in the Fitzroy so um, yeah anyway here's a little bit of footage uh, from a previous day uh, running the same technique and uh, yeah thanks for watching don't, don't forget to subscribe thanks very much cheers